Hi, <laughs> my name is Gloria Cabral. I'm the program coordinator for the Culinary Arts Department at Bristol Community College. And welcome to our first episode of The Cutting Board. This show will be have many different entities, different areas we're gonna go, but we're gonna start by explaining why we chose the name. And it was through different people talking of what would be the best thing. Life starts on a cutting board in the cooking field. Uh, so we are going to talk about the cutting board. This is my friend, John Dunn. John, I call him a master craftsman. He just says he's a board maker, but he <laughs> is amazing. And we, what we originally started doing is what's the difference between a cutting board and then we will go into there. So John, a lot of times I use the plastic cutting boards because I can just throw them in the dishwasher. And these were a couple I brought from my house. This was made, uh, I'm not sure what type of wood, but it was yes. made because our emblem from the culinary arts. And this one, I was when I was in Italy, uh, it was made out of olive wood and I found it very interesting. Well, the larger one over here, you didn't know the wood, that's maple. Maple? Maple. And is maple hardwood to good Maple is a hardwood. It's a North American species. Uh, the hardwoods from maple come from northern New England. Soft maple comes from southern New England. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know if you the, realize that. There's a the difference. Cold, there the is a difference because of the cold. And is that the same where I'd get maple syrup? Maple syrup, believe it or not, you can get maple syrup out of either species of tree. It takes, and I might be off on the numbers here, but it's roughly 40 gallons of syrup, excuse me, 40, 40 gallons of sap to make a gallon of syrup yeah. from a soft maple tree, which is oh. primarily in southern New England. In northern New England, it takes something like eight gallons of sap to make a wow, gallon. Wow, that's a big huge, difference. Huge, <laughs> huge difference. That's why you don't see anybody <laughs> making maple syrup in Rhode Island and Massachusetts. That's right. <laughs> uh, back to your original point about the plastic. And we always have the issues of bacteria on cutting boards, as you well know, you're mm -hmm. cutting whatever on there. Plastic traps bacteria. And I'm sure you've oh, seen it when you- That'd be like in, in these little cuts. All those little cuts. And the more you use plastic and the more you've cut it, the more you're scraping it with a, say an SOS mm -hmm. pad or something like that. You, it's not just the cut, but you can actually see the bits of plastic, little curlies and whatnot. Yeah, all kinds of stuff in there. It, it traps actually traps bacteria. So sanitizing wise, that's not the best thing. No, it is not. Uh, if you want to switch over to wood, a study was done by the University of Wisconsin. They compared plastic, wood, and glass hmm. of bacteria. Wood actually fights bacteria. Plastic, like I said, it traps it and it forces growth of bacteria. Mm -hmm. Glass actually is a slight growth of bacteria, but nowhere near it's plastic. Better, it's actually better than the plastic, but not as good e as the Exactly. Wood. And it's, you have the knives over there. When you're using a knife on glass, you're actually you cutting your next customer. Oh. I mean, your next uh, client. You can tell you that it's terrible for a knife. Oh yeah, because it'll wear that it'll knife blade wear down. wear that when... knife down, exactly. Whereas plastic, you know, you're basically just soaring just away. Through. Yeah, <laughs> it's a slower dull. <laughs> it's a slower dull, <laughs> thank you. And, and wood, wood, like I said, you, you, know, you can put marks in it before when you're, when you're cutting it, but you can always just sand it down and then you have a new board again. Now you just sand it with regular sandpaper? Regular sandpaper, you, you, depending upon how fine you want it, you can see some of these are pretty fine. You could I start at say 60 grit down to 300, uh, three, 320 rather. Oh, nice. Now I have this here and I can feel that it needs a little bit of love yeah. to it because <laughs> you know I just put it on my counter and I use it more for decoration or at Thanksgiving. What would you suggest to do to my pieces? Well, first of all, if, just to take that, just the way it is right now, if you want a little white sanding on that, it will take mm -hmm. whatever marks are on it. Then what you'd want to do, then what you would want to do is put mineral oil on it. Mineral oil is very neutral mm -hmm. oil, as opposed to putting, say, like we mentioned before, olive oils. Uh, walnut oil is a popular one. The only problem with walnut oil is somebody might have a nut allergy. 
Then what you can do is put on a little board butter. And what's board butter? Board butter is basically mineral oil and beeswax. So you could actually make that at home? You with can make this at home. Or it's roughly a three or a four to one mineral oil to beeswax combination. You just heat it up. Be careful you don't set the kitchen on fire with it. I know, I know beeswax <laughs> doesn't like to melt as easy as the mineral. Exactly. <laughs> Well, what some, some people do is they'll put it in a, in, a, in a container inside boiled water. Right, and that's what I've done with beeswax working with it before because mm. even when I'm cooking in certain things, and it doesn't like to clean well. No, it doesn't. So that's, why say you put it, <laughs> that's why I say put it in something that's disposable. Whatever container disposable. goes in, yeah, you can just throw it away. <laughs> that's exactly what, the point I was getting at. Yeah. You can also, I'm not suggesting this, but a hair dryer. You put it in the little aluminum tins that yeah. you get from, say, pot pies. Yep, yep. You put it in there and just heat it with a, with a, with a uh, uh, hair dryer, and it will actually melt it. I know when, when I work sometimes with, um, I'll separate, uh, I'll melt out the wax, uh, the beeswax, and I'll have propolis in it because I use it in soap making. Mm -hmm. And I have these disposable liners, and I put them in a big hotel pan. I'll fill it. You put about this much butter, I mean, this much of the wax, and when it comes down, it's about this big. But then when I'm done, I can peel it right out peel and it off throw it away yeah, yeah, yeah. because I have one pan that I realized that doesn't work with. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm lazy. <laughs> that's it. But that's a good thing to know. So it's a four to one, a four, three, Yeah, it, three depends, on, it depends on the consistency you want. If you want it more liquidy, obviously you put in more mineral oil. oil. You want it a little, like this one here, this. A three to one, that looks like This yeah, is a roughly bit. three to one. Oh, it's very soft. Yes. Like the consistency of Vaseline. Yeah. Let me just... Exactly. Or butter. That's what they call board butter. It's like butter. Yes, yeah, like soft and butter. That's exactly. perfect. In fact, I can just do this to my hands. See? <laughs> and uh, and I, can I throw this in the dishwasher once in a while? Absolutely. Positively, no. No. <laughs> Anything wood. And this goes for your um, spoons, spatulas, things of that nature. And yes. board butter, by the way, is good for those as well. Oh, good. Don't think, think, don't think of this as strictly for boards. It's any, any, of you wooden, wooden. any of you wooden products. But what the uh, dishwasher does to it is the wood will soak up that water. Then you're putting it basically in an oven when it goes on the dry cycle. Yeah. And it won't be long before you start with a nice warped board. Oh, or the seams, splits like the this. Seams, the seams will start to split. Anything, anything in that nature will foster a splitting of the wood. Okay. So, I, yeah, I can see that this has to go home. I have a job for my husband. He's going <laughs> to sand this. And I'm going to make some of the uh, butter. And, in fact, I'll actually bring it to school because we do have... It's, it's simple to make. It, 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 it doesn't take long at all. Yeah, because we have butcher blocks at school, and the students use it for that. And over the summer, we, like I said, we cover it with oil. We have a um, butcher block oil, and we cover it with plastic to hold in the oil. But I gather I've been holding in the moisture, which is not the yeah, good you're thing. You're holding in moisture. Any, any board whatsoever, you do not want it to get wet and stay wet. Okay. We want it to dry. You want it to dry. And the best way to store these and keeping it dry is to stand them on end. Why? Basically, when they're sitting here flat, even though you might have dried it mm -hmm. with a towel, it's still not 100% dry. Not to mention you don't know what's on the counter. So when you're sitting there, what happens is the top of the board will dry out, whereas the bottom can be still damp. Oh, and it can and then create it warping. starts to create that, that, that uh, warpness to it. Um, the seams will then have more of an avenue to separate. The water expands the wood. Okay. It will expand and start to try to pull away, and that's why you get those cracks. Okay. People, people don't realize that uh, wood is a breathable commodity. Right. It will change with the atmospheric conditions. If it's hot and humid, it expands. If it's cold, it contracts. All that, and all that expansion and contraction right. works against the glue joint. Okay. And the result would be... The splitting. The splitting. Now, if I'm going to buy, I mean, you have so many beautiful pieces here, and I've seen a lot of your pieces. In fact, I have one in my office that is very special to me. 
what would I look for if I'm looking at these? Because we talked about going, you know, knots and woods and types of yeah. woods and where wood comes from. It depends on what you, your function is. Like this one here has got that little 3D look. This is more for show. It is functional, don't get me wrong. Right. But people always tell me, oh, I, would, I don't want to cut on it. Mm -hmm. But what you want to look for in a cutting board is a very nice, tight grain right there. on the wood. Yep, nice and smooth, very tight. And you want the grain to be going in the same direction. Once again, getting back to that expansion and contraction. If you have wood that the grain is going in different directions, the wood wants to expand They're and contract in different, different directions. Exactly. They want to fight each other, mm -hmm. and then you get cracks. Ah. And the glue that I use is so strong that it actually can crack the wood. The wood oh, will crack. If it's, yeah. It, it just wants to move. And it's holding it still. And it, the glue is so strong that it's going to crack someplace. So the weakest link in in, these, in the wood will will separate. It'll crack. Back to the original question about which is which and which is best. Going back to the end grain again. This is what they call a flat grain board. That's a flat grain board or edge grain. Yeah. Edge edge being this one this way. And I'll look at see this one like that like that. Okay. This is an end grain board. End grain boards are basically this end of the grain, mm -hmm. only you make the entire board that way. Oh, okay, that's your, and that comes with your design. The designs could be anything under the sun. When, actually, when you're making these, an end grain board is more, you can be more creative in what you do. I see, you've done a great, I mean, the look is gorgeous. An end grain board is much gentler on your knives. Think of a handful of spaghetti. For, when you have a handful of spaghetti going this way mm -hmm. and you cut it with a knife, you're cutting the fibers. Now here's a regular flat grain. The spaghetti's on there, you're actually cutting the fibers of the wood. Mm -hmm. When you're cutting on an end grain board, think of the spaghetti this way. You put the knife in, the spaghetti separates. Then it comes back, it rejuvenates itself. That is exactly what happens on an end grain board. The end grain separates a bit and then comes back much gentler on your knives. That's and an important thing because our knives, you know, get very dull very fast. And like I mentioned before, especially on glass. On glass, yeah. <laughs> on glass and, you know, I'm a pastry chef, so a lot of that on everything because we chop everything. Yeah. So we, we look at, you know, we're a little tougher on our knives. But our cutting boards um, are beautiful. Now, why you have, did you paint this? This must have taken a long time to paint your wood. <laughs> no, actually, I'm not that good of an artist, believe well, me. You are, but, yeah. The woods that I use and what most, well, I should say most, all people use that do this type of thing, it's all natural. Every color you see is natural color of the wood. This is gorgeous. This is purple hot from South America. This is walnut and this is cherry. This is um, hickory. Hickory is the strongest wood in North America. Wow. This is walnut again and that's cherry. This is beech. European beach. beach, actually European bleached beach. Okay. Excuse me, not bleached. Bleach, a lighter. What they do is they steam it. Oh, okay. So steam beach. They steam it to draw the color more evenly. Oh, okay. Uh, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, you can see how this the is lighter and darker and lighter and the, darker. And these grains are gorgeous. Yeah. That's what they do. They try to get this more uniform in color. And this wood is called Bacote. It's from Central America. This is... You can oh, the see the green. green, you know, figuring rings for years. That's actually beautiful. And this is speaking of years, everybody thinks the years, you count the rings, rings. in the tree and you get the years. Well, here's an easy way to sh see how this is lighter. Yes. And this is darker. Yes. This is what they call heartwood. This is what they call sapwood. Mm -hmm. Okay. Think of a tree. You always see a cut tree, you see the center Dark, of it yeah, is, the is darker. That's the heartwood. As you. Uh tree grows and you go out that hot wood gets bigger but as you get to the outer portion of the tree it it's gets lighter, lighter and lighter and lighter so this is more and than that deep. gives you this that's sap wood that is beautiful now are your woods local do you buy them locally or yes um, the domestic woods the maples the cherries and whatnot you can get those any place mm -hmm. the exotic woods you have to go to 
people travel. that actually, yeah, you have to travel for that. People, and what do you mean by exotic woods? Exotic woods are anything, basically anything that's coming from out of the country, uh, typically from Africa, South America, and Central America. Um, Is there a big difference in price? Huge difference in price. The most expensive domestic wood would be on the lower end of the scale, cost-wise, from exotic woods. Like, I could tell you that this piece of wood right here costs roughly three, three and a half times what walnut costs. Oh, so when I'm looking at it, I have to learn a little bit about my woods before I make that exactly, purchase. Exactly, exactly. This one, and well, even these two are close in size, and I'm sure there's a big difference in price. Big difference in price. So that makes it much more, as a consumer, you know, you talk to somebody, People don't realize how much it, time it takes to make this, how much work it is, and they'll say, oh, that's a lot of money, I can go to the store and buy it. But this is a craft. Just, just to give you a little, a little idea, these two boards are approximately the same size. Mm -hmm. okay? This is typical striped board. Doesn't matter what the wood is. Right. I can do something like this in a day if I'm pushing it. If I have some nice weather for the glue to dry. Yeah. <laughs> this board here takes me three days. Big difference. Big difference. And you Three figure by the hours difference. and everything else. Exactly. You know, well, this has the little pattern to it. You can see yeah. how it's, it's a little nice three-dimensional. A nice little wave to it. Gives I it have to do this in three separate cut and glues. So, obviously, it should be more right. money than this one. Right. This board here. Has a lot. This board here. These are end grain boards. Remember I mentioned uh, that. It's this yeah, end of the that, wood. That, and that way you get a harder piece better for my you knives. You get a better piece of harder for your knives. But the same scenario. I have to make make a board like this, this and then cut it up. And then stand on it and do it again in order to make that create board. That. And in doing it this way, I have to use roughly 25% more wood to make the same size board. If for argument's sake these two were the same size, I would need 25% more wood to make this board versus and this board. Again, 25% more of the more expensive adds to the wood cost. adds to the cost. Exactly. And I'm looking at this one as a puzzle piece, and this is a lot of time, you know. Very now, now, do you just figure these out of your head, or? I, everything I do is strictly out of my head. I, that's, I, uh, that's why you're an artist. <laughs> <laughs> well, believe it or not, I've actually changed in midstream. I might have an idea in my head mm -hmm. to make this board. Okay, so now I glue it up and I cut it up. When I'm putting these strips together to form this, I can manipulate those depending on how, how I want to turn want them. And I can have a totally different board. Totally different. And sometimes I might have had this in my head, and then, but when I started to put it together, I said, geez, I like this one better. It's like a quilt. Exactly. It's actually like so a quilt. So I'll do it this way. And I can, these panels that you see here, you can actually shift these back and forth to it's create okay. offsets like that. Well, this has been a great, great learning experience. The cutting board is going to be bringing you all kinds of new ideas, new things, and we will be able to, actually I'm going to purchase one of these cutting boards for the show. And so we can see it here on different episodes because they are pieces of art. Uh, so as our show continues in different episodes, we're going to bring on different people. Uh, we're going to have a few shows with kids going to college. We may have some young children or local and sustainable. Whatever you may find that you like to see, please contest contact us at DCTV and for any information we will be gladly send it to you for John's beautiful work and for all our uh, things we do here. Uh, welcome and we will see you soon at the cutting board.